Yes. Hello, everybody. I'm Yasmina Vidic from INRAE in France. We are working in Institute Michaelis in the team Pathogen Immunity and Microbiota. Our team leader is Nalini Ramarao, and today with the PhD student Priya Vizini, who will graduate in within a few days, and Marco Marin, who will be our future PhD student, uh, we will present you what we are doing in the lab regarding paper-based detection of Campylobacter species. Next. So why we are studying Campylobacter? Campylobacter is the most commonly reported foodborne pathogen worldwide. Regarding the reports from 2018 of European Food Safety Authority and European Center for Disease Prevention and Control, there was about 250,000 confirmed cases in Europe, only in one year. And the number of cases is even higher because in some, uh, in some infections, there is no symptoms. Usually, symptoms are gastrointestinal disorder and fever. And in 1% of infection, there is a very severe William Gabare syndrome when ba uh, bacteria attack nerve cells. Usually in Europe, people are contaminated by eating uh, uncooked chicken meat or unpasteurized milk. However, in the world, there is also a lot of contamination because of the consumption of contaminated drinking water by Campylobacter. Concerning le legislation in Europe, in 2005, there was a, a first reglementation that imposed um, that Campylobacter should be absent in 25 grams of food products in order to the products can be commercialized in the European market. And starting from 2017, there is a new legislation regarding only uh, a carcass of broiler. And this reglementation imposed it should be less than 1,000 colony forming units per gram of the carcass of broiler after chilling. Although this uh, uh, checking and screening of uh, carcass of uh, poultry meat is mandatory in Europe, we are still missing a rapid and robust method for the to apply this reglementation. Instead, we are using uh, traditional methods that takes time and also a lot of money. Uh, traditional procedures are described by international standard organization and they require an enrichment step in which bolton or preston are the main broth that can be used, followed by a selective isolation in MCCDA medium or other selective isolation medium such as Carmali or Batzer. Subsequently to this, a purification step is needed with Kulmebod agar and finally, uh, for identity purpose, mobility and oxidase tests are performed, but also they check in the growth in Columbia blood agar, but in aerobic condition. For the first food stuff sampling and counting, there are three main steps. The first is food sampling, the second is the enrichment broth, and finally, the third is the incubation step. For what concerns the sampling of poultry meat, sterilized tools are needed and also Bunsen in order to uh, guarantee a sterilized area. For this reason, skin and tail have to be cut next to the Bunsen plate and then have to be weighted in a stomacher bag. Subsequently to this, the selected enrichment broth has to be poured into the bag with a rate volume ratio 1 to 10. It has to be homogenized for one minute and incubated for 48 hours at 41.5 degrees Celsius. The selective isolation step is composed by 0.1 milliliter of enrichment broth that has to be stirred on MCCDA medium. After that, the incubation step required micro aerophilic condition. And for this purpose, a candle or a campigen sheet has to be added into the jar. The incubation required 48 hours at 41.5 degrees Celsius. For purification purposes, 
one colony has to be steered from MCCDA medium onto Columbia blood agar medium in sterilized condition. For this reason, this step have to be, has to be carried out next to the Bunsen plane. Also for the purification, microphilic conditions are required for the incubation step. For this reason, a jar with a candle or a campygen sheet is required. The incubation is at 41.5 degrees Celsius for 48 hours. Finally, for identity confirmation purpose, oxidase tests and motility tests are performed. For this reason, one colony has to be steered in sterile condition onto oxidase test and a change of color in a certain region time should be noticed. For what concerns motility test, one colony has to be steered in Brussels abroad. After that, one droplet should be poured onto a glass for a microscope and by means of the optic microscope, um, a movement of microorganisms in a certain time, uh, in a certain region of time, should be noticed. This step allow the identity confirmation of Campylobacter in several days. So, another technique to detect Campylobacter is the paper-based method. It's a molecular technique and it's able to recognize the genomic DNA of Campylobacter, the DNA target, by a specific labeled DNA probe. The step about the sampling food and the enrichment brought are the same of ISO. But after the incubation with the Volton brought, the following step is the DNA extraction through a phenol protocol. The DNA extract is, is mobilized on paper membrane and the hybridization was carried out uh, uh, by label probe and the design uh, and, the, and the detection signal due to hybridization between a label probe and a DNA target can be read out with the several systems such as immunoenzymatic, enzymatic, semiluminescent and electrochemical systems. Next. Now we see the, the procedure for the DNA extraction. First of all, after the enrichment brought, the cell must be concentrated. Thus, as shown in the image A, an amount of enrichment brought is centrifugated to obtain a pellet cell. In B, the supernatant is thrown away and the pellet is resuspended with a breaking buffer. In C, the solution is transferred in a tube with glass beads and phenol chloroform. The samples are vortex to hollow the breaking cell and then centrifuge to obtain the separation phases. In this, it's possible to see that the three phases are obtained. From the top, there is the aqueous phase in which is the DNA is presented. Then there is the protein phase and the last one is the organic phase in which there are the residues of reagents. The aqueous phase is transferred in another tube with ethanol, how you see in letter E. This step allows to obtain a pellet of DNA by centrifuge, as shown in letter F. Subsequently, a washing step with ethanol at 70% is performed to obtain a pure DNA. The DNA from each sample is denatured at 95 degrees before the deposition of paper membrane. The membrane is positively charged to help the DNA mobilization. The single strand of DNA is spotted onto the membrane and it was cross-linked by exposure by UV light. The DNA probe can be labeled by digoxygenin or biotin. This depends from which kind of a detection system you want to use. The probe is designed to recognize a complementary DNA sequence to present only in the genome of Campylobacter. Thus, the membrane is incubated in an hybridization buffer containing the probe to hollow the hybridization. In a monzymatic readout, the probe is labeled with digoxygenin. The membrane was incubated with an antibody antidigoxygenin, which is labeled with an enzyme, alkaline phosphatase. In the end, the probe target complex is detected by a chromogenic reaction between ALP and NBT substrate. 
so a colorimetric detection is carried out with an intense purple precipitation. Instead, in enzymatic readout, the probe is labeled with biotin. The membrane was incubated with streptavidin, which is labeled with EVHRP. The probe target complex in this case is detected by a chromogenic reaction between HRP and TMB substrate. So a colorimetric detection is carried out with a blue precipitate. In a chemilumination readout, uh, the probe is labeled with biotin. The membrane was incubated with the streptavidin with this label with the HRP. Instead, in this technique, the substrate used is the luminol. So the probe target complex is detected from the light emission caused by the chemical reaction between HRP and luminol. The results need to uh, CCD camera for the reading. So we can summarize that, that in the lab we are using uh, um, streptavidin with the HRP to reveal reaction. HRP is a very interesting enzyme because it's allowed different, uh, different readouts. And also we can replace streptavidin by commercial antibodies that are directed against tag that we put on the DNA probe. So if uh, we are using luminol and hydrogen peroxide, there is a possibility to have hemiluminescent signal that can be recorded by the CDD camera. If we are using a chromogenic substrate like TMZ and hydrogen peroxide, uh, HRP uh, re enzymatic reaction produce colorated precipitates. It's a blue spot that we can observe with the naked eyes. And this is a very interesting configuration because we need no instrumentation to read results. Finally, there is a third possibility, is to, to have a electrochemical detection because TMB as a substrate for AGP is also a redox probe. And in the presence of AGP, uh, it uh, oxidizes on the electrode, it changes electrode with the electrons with the electrode. So for this, uh, there is several techniques to print uh, electrode on the paper. We can print two or three electrodes. In this case of three electrode system, there is a working electrode. On the working electrode, uh, we mobilize DNA, uh, DNA to be detected. There is auxiliary electrode and also the reference electrode. They allowed to impose potential and to record currents. So after immobilization of the DNA of Campylobacter and hybridization with the DNA probe that carries uh, a biotin tag, it's enough to add the streptavidin with the HRP and to add TMB. In this case, uh, TMB, as I told you, can oxidize on the electrode. And this reaction can be measured by cyclic voltammetry, for instance, that we are using in the, in the lab. If there is no HRP, uh, TMB alone cannot be oxidized. However, in the presence of uh, HRP, it means in the presence of uh, uh, specific Campylobacter DNA, we have an oxidation signal, and the intensity of this signal is proportional to the concentration of DNA. So electrochemical setup allows to have a quantitative readout to quantify a quantity or amount of uh, Campylobacter DNA. At the end, to summarize, we can compare paper-based tests to detect Campylobacter and traditional methods. Both methods require enrichment step because Campylobacter is present in contaminated uh, chicken meats at very low quantity. So during uh, two days, there is a amplification, multiplication of bacterial cells. In the case of traditional methods, uh, some parts of uh, enrichment step is spread on the, uh, the selective agar, and there is a culture of this agar for two days, and, there's, and then there is a subculturing of the blood agar for another two days, and yet there is a need for confirmation test. In total, at least five days are needed to obtain results with traditional method, and the price is about 40 to 80 euros per analysis. In the contrary, in the case of paper-based test, we are doing extraction of DNA, and detection of DNA on the paper, and both takes a few hours. However, total analysis is still two days because there is a Richmond step. And in the lab, we are currently working on the methods to replace this Richmond step by another method that allows to concentrate bacteria cells. And total price of the analysis is less than 10 euros. 
So we can conclude that uh, paper-based test completely uh, completely assure, uh, fits with the assured criteria recommended by World Health Organization because they are affordable. Paper is not expensive, and this all procedure is very, very rapid and robust. They're sensitive and specific, and this is be, uh, due to the specific DNA probe that we use in the in direction. It's also very easy and uh, user friendly to perform. It can be equipment free if we are using a color, uh, readout colorimetric with uh, we need no equipment, and finally they are deliverable. So at the end, I thank you for your attention. We all. Three of us, we thank you for your attention.